Wow, it's been a while, but we're back. Yay! VoiceOver Body Shop and our guest tonight joining us all the way from down under, like on the other side of the world. Where the toilet's flushed the wrong way around. I, it's just, we'll have to ask him about that. <laughs> Yes. Lofty Fulton, there he is. Say hi, Lofty. Hey, guys. All right. If you got hey, a question, thanks for having me on the show tonight. Oh, we're thrilled to have you. And if you got a question for for Lofty, get it in the chat room. Yeah, we got both chat rooms. One of them will be making nice bubble pops. So if you send us one, you'll hear the bubble pop on the show because because we don't know why. <laughs> it's one of those nights. Way it is. And we also have a Facebook chat. You can post your questions in. All right. All of that coming up right now on VoiceOver Body Shop. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom. The engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Hi there, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. My, we have been gone for a long time. Yes, but you were uh, probably didn't miss being here that much. No. Based on what you were doing. Yeah, we, we, we took a Central European cruise down the Danube. Yes. Great, you know, Viking cruises, they're great. Um, the food was great. 180 people on the boat. We get to meet all of them. That's quaint. It was quaint. No kids. Wow. It's the first time RC and I had a chance to actually get away without the kids. Your kids or anybody else's or kids. Anybody else's kids. And, you know, it was our 25th anniversary. And I got a picture here of this restaurant in Budapest. This is the New York Cafe in Budapest. And as you oh, can I see, it Facebook. is quite an elegant place. Holy cow. And uh, I don't know how it is they knew it was our anniversary, but they gave us more pastry. So we were totally <laughs> stuffed with pastry that night. But we had a grand old time uh, on the Danube. We were in nice. Prague, which is not on the Danube. Uh, but we were you know, in Linz, in Bratislava, and uh, Vienna, and Budapest. And Incredible. Budapest was gorgeous. Just which, a, which place had the best uh, concert hall that you went into? Well, Vienna had the most concert the halls. The most concert halls? But the concert hall we went to in Budapest was the Franz Liszt Academy, and it was beautiful. Probably pretty good. And the acoustic, <laughs> the acoustics in all of them were marvelous. Oh, we went to one concert in Vienna that was like half Mozart, half Strauss. It was very touristy, and it was hokey, and it was so much fun. But it was in this, this concert hall. It was very small. Uh, it's 350 years old and Mozart and Liszt and all these guys actually played there. And it was like, it was also incredibly hot, <laughs> but. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, just. It, There's no air conditioning in these this places. Just marble block. That's right. You know, That's totally right. airtight building. Yes. But I'm glad to be back. I guess you went snowboarding. I never got to the snow yet. No? I did go mountain biking yeah. on, uh, over the weekend. I had friends that went mountain biking up to the top of Mount Wilson and got about two miles from the top. Yeah. Before the snow just got too deep to ride. <laughs> oh, this is just bizarre, folks. I mean, to drive from Topanga 
over the hill and look at the valley and all you can see is snow capped mountain range all the way from what looks like Ojai all the way across. It's yeah. just so rare for us, but it's amazing. And we're going to get more. And it's only the beginning of just December. Just warmed up. Yes. And it's only the beginning of our show. And it's time to introduce our guest who is joining us from far, far away where it's summer. <laughs> it is. It's a full on, right? It well, is. It's, get, it's getting into summer or full on summer? It's it, well. Let's see. It, well, we'll have to ask him. Yeah. Joining us from Sydney, Australia, is a really prime voice from down there, Mr. Ian Lofty Fulton. Let's turn on his mic, shall we? Hey, there's an idea. Give another intro. <laughs> Ian Lofty Fulton. Hey guys, there how you it going? is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Oh, you punk does. Been a long the beauty time. of technology. <laughs> Absolutely. It's been a long time since we've seen you. Uh, now, I remember the first time I met you, I thought your, your name was Lefty. <laughs> You're not the first to think that. Okay. <laughs> I have I have had Lifty as well, and lifty. I don't know where Lifty would come from. That's an interesting but, uh, one. Others go, I can't. It's, uh, I think it's Shorty, and that just sort of like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, generally the default for most people is shorty, and that just brings a blank expression of uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. Aim that. higher, please. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, now you're you're a voice artist in Australia, or in, mm -hmm. or I guess as you like an Oz, as you guys like to call it, Oz. And yeah, um, and, yeah, Oz is fine. Okay, and uh, so are you from Sydney originally, or? Uh, no, I'm I'm originally from that little island state that when you look at the map of Australia, you see the little island state. Tasmania? Where comes from. Yeah, I'm originally a Tasmanian. So, um, Far out. Oh. Uh, yeah, th there's many things said about Tasmanians, two heads, inbred, um, all of that kind of stuff. Um, not all of it's true. In fact, a lot of it's not. Uh, Tassie's a beautiful place. And then uh, my career brought me to the mainland and I just moved up the eastern seaboard and uh ended up back here in in sydney how's the fire situation right now um it's been pretty touch and go george to be honest i know california has has been dealing with a with a lot of fires as well and it's um you guys were talking about the season it is now officially summer but these fires started way back in pretty well the middle of spring right. and all the authorities are just going what is going on? We're seeing the kind of conditions we're used to in summer. And if this is a fire season in spring, what is summer going to be like? So it doesn't right. necessarily bode well for that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 It's really sad for a lot of people who have lost property and, and unfortunately some have lost their life as well. Yeah. Well, that, that's, that's, I watched, the... I watched one of those amazing clips where a lady rescues a koala. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. Incredible. Yes. Moving and scary yeah. and harrowing. Yeah. Did the koala and brings a tear to your eye as well, doesn't it? Sure it does, yeah. They, they, they nursed it back to, wow. back to health. Ah, that's amazing. So you're, you're a voice actor down there. And now I'm, mm -hmm. I imagine that the the business is a little bit different down there than it is here. Uh, you were, we were talking earlier because it's, it's a smaller market, but how, you know, you probably know how it works here a little bit, but how does it work down there? Well, I down suppose the, the thing about it and, Dan, that um, as you said, it's it's a smaller market. We are we are a population in size of only 25, 26 million people. So what are we talking about? Uh, roughly the uh, population of California thereabouts. So the US being more than 300 million. Our market by virtue of being smaller operates slightly differently. For instance, we don't audition, which I know auditioning is uh, common in the States. In fact, you pretty well audition for most things. There are exceptions to that rule. If, for instance, you're being considered for uh, a network promo gig or something like that, of course, you're going to audition. But um, clients don't just ring up and say, I'd like to hear what you sound like on this ad. Um, if they do that, that's fine, but they will pay what is known as a submission fee, which is a, a percentage of the final fee. And likewise, being a smaller market, we also don't get the residuals we get say a one-off payment um for the job and the client will buy it as to whether it's going on tv radio being used on the net or being used for something else like whether it's um a conference is there a union in, in australia for for voice there actors? is a union 
there is a union and they've um, they've fought hard to uh, create the rates that we all work from now. And even though we don't get residuals, um, if the client buys the product for say a three month buy or a 12 month buy, and they go outside of that time frame, then there is another fee due to be paid. They can't just roll it over and kind of not let you know about it. Right. So. Well, it's nice that they have a submission fee. You know, if you if you're auditioning for something and they're 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 paying you to because I mean, how many people are they generally asking to do that? It's probably a, a fairly small number. Well, yeah. To to use an example, um, you, uh, myself, and George could be considered for a job, and the client thinks, well, I know all three of the guys can do it, but I want to hear what their interpretation is. And so, you would be booked to go into a studio, do your submission for it, and um, then the client decides which of the three he's going to use. And generally, um, the submission won't go final. Sometimes they do, but um, generally they'll get you back again to to redo it as a final, as a final track. Right. What type of work do you specialize in or do you do everything across the board? My, my bread and butter tends to be uh, promos and station imaging, uh, both for TV and radio. That's the thing that tends to keep me the busiest. The other one that uh, is, is a really good one for me is doing, um, I think you guys would refer to them as industrials. We call them uh, corporate narrations, um, and uh, as as strange as it might sound, what is sometimes referred to as the voice of God stuff for a conference that might be being held, uh, whether it's a um, a financial year conference for a company. And ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The conference is about to start. Award ceremonies for industries. They're they're primarily the things I tend to do. Yeah. And, 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 and that's great stuff because you got to have a flow of things, you know, a constant stream of, of work if you want to make a mm. living in this business and it's, and to find clients like that, who will, you know, help you out and, and have you uh, get that stuff done is, is really important. So that's great that you you can get that kind of stuff. How many TV stations are there? Well, how many Australia, of course, is, it's a bigger country than most people think. I mean, it's an Island, mm. but it's a continent. You know, it's like two, two places in one. Uh, yeah. How many, how many major markets are there in Australia? There goes my dog, by the yeah. way. Uh, adding sound effects when he wants. Yeah. Oscar, yeah. please be quiet. Whether he'll listen to me or not, I don't know. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. That's right. um, okay. We're there, there are four, uh, there are, I beg your pardon, there are three uh, major commercial network stations, uh, two government stations, um, and then there is a uh, subscription or cable TV as well, which has a plethora of stations that you can choose from. But we have uh, three commercial free-to-air and two free-to-air stations that the, uh, the government is an enterprise in. Mm -hmm. and, and So um, when you look at the, the cable stations and the subscription-based, of course, your choices are, are many and varied, and they extend as to whether or not you're a sports fan, whether you're a, a news fan, or whatever the case might be, you would tailor your subscription to what it is that uh, you particularly want to watch. Yeah. Love Australian rules football, especially when the man from GLAD comes out from behind the goalpost and just points out. Oh, yeah. I, yep. And then waves his flags and says, you've done a good job. That's well right. done. You got yourself a goal. That's right. Yeah. Or if he only waves one flag, you've got a point. So a goal is worth six points and a behind is a single point. It's so. an excuse to have drink Foster's. That's all I've. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, Dan, I've got to tell you, Foster's. Mm, <laughs> that's your not a beer. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. That's, that's what they have here. What's the good beer in Australia? Yeah, yeah. Oh, look, at the moment, I've been um, I've been very fond of a pale ale called 150 Lashes. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's it's a very nice beer, one that I'm very fond of. So, um, yeah, there's a few of them doing the rounds, but that's, <laughs> that's my favorite beer at the moment. All righty. Well, if you're just joining us, uh, we're talking with Lofty Fulton, who's joining us from Sydney, Australia, where it's like like 11 o'clock, 11.15, 11, 11.20. 11, what time is it there? Or does time uh, go well, backwards the down freaky, there? I'd... Here's the freaky thing. It's uh, just gone 20 past midday on Tuesday. All right. So, so, so we're a day ahead of you, basically. All right. So. Well, we won't keep you from lunch too long. 
Uh, oh, look, thank you. Does that mean I'm boring? No, okay. not at all. Not at all. No, <laughs> no, no, and I know that there are people who do watch the show live in Australia, and they're always talking about, oh, we're just eating lunch while you guys are on live. Mm. Kind of cool. Yeah, uh, I was. Uh, I got the Vegemite sandwich ready to go. Outstanding. I never yeah. tried it. I probably never will. Um <laughs> So if anybody has a question for Ian and you want to, you want to, you're fascinated by what he does and, and what it's like down in Australia or uh, some other stuff that we want to cover, throw it in the chat room right now. And I think George is watching the chat room and uh, I am, and uh, we will pass that question on to him in our next segment. Um, so it, you, you've, you've, you, you've had a very interesting career. Now we met like 10 years ago. Yeah, and, 2008, I think it was. Yeah, voice. so 11 years ago. God, yeah. we've been doing that this well, we've been doing this show for eight and a half years, so it's The reason wow. we are doing this show is because Dan and I met at that same conference. That's right. That's why oh, the you're show kidding. exists. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Well, on behalf of uh, the Luddites like myself who know very little about studio equipment and engineering and how to set one up properly, thank you guys. Well, you're quite welcome. Yeah, I was um, I was watching um, I was watching a playback about noise gating earlier, and I I, I got confused. My uh, my eyes started to sort of like spin. So I I thought, no, I'll I'll ask George about that. It's time. probably for the better because if you yeah. do it wrong, it makes yeah. it sound terrible. Yeah, I, I think we've yeah. a, we've actually sort of like gotten away from noise gating. It, we really well, this is it. I I don't use it here at home, but then again, my um, it's not primitive, but uh, my the way I record is fairly basic. I yeah. don't worry about the bells and whistles because i don't understand them most of the time well you don't need them that's the whole point you know so so tell us a little bit about how you're set up there and yeah. you were you were saying that a, a most of the work that you do is that outside studios but you do do some work at home that is that is correct um we're starting we're starting to move towards the u.s model of um of working from home but the reluctance has been and quite rightly so um in the past that uh, some studios at home weren't set up properly. And a, and a very dear friend of mine who's been a sound engineer for quite some time said, uh, no matter how hard you try, you can't get the sound of drywall out of a mix. <laughs> um, so as I say, when, um, when I was setting up my studio, a very dear friend of mine, Jamie Green, came and uh, helped me set it up and got all the, the right equipment. And actually, here's one I prepared earlier for you guys. Um, sure. Just excuse me as I roll back from the camera. That's good. This is actually my booth. So, and people know I haven't shrunk. It's just that I'm not that tall. <laughs> um, so... I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, we can see it from here, sure. It's a cubby. Yeah, that's, it's like an outcome, that's my yeah. voiceover booth. So what it is, um, I had the opportunity to get a um, a vocal booth from a client, which they no longer needed because they were building a, a proper isolation studio. And um, then somebody said to me, where are you going to put it? And I said, well, um, upstairs in the second studio. And they said, you know how heavy that damn thing is? So um, I had to I had to have a workaround. It would have been great to have the actual vocal booth, but the weight of it would not be a good idea to put upstairs. Um, and uh, so this is it. it. What it is is four uh, internal doors, if you like. Yeah. It's the kind of doors you have in your home. Um, they've all been hinged together. They can be taken apart and moved easily and lined with uh, audio foam. And it does the job quite nicely. Um, in there, just this microphone here, uh, a Neumann U87. Oh. Uh, uh, and there is a mic stand that doesn't have a mic in it at the moment because that's the Sennheiser 416 that I'm talking to you guys on and got sitting on the desk. So um, a client of mine who um, I would go and work with, Dan, in in the studio in Sydney, and we live just south of the city, about an hour and a half out. He said, "What's the point of driving all that way if we can get you set up at home to get the to replicate the sound that we want?" And um, yeah, God bless him in a way that one night, because he lives not far from me as well, he came round and we positioned the mic and different configurations of door open, door closed, whereabouts in the studio. And he got it to the way he wanted it to sound. And now I work from home instead of driving two hours up the road. Well, that's that's what we'd like to hear from people because that really is, that that's what makes this business work is that you can work from home. 
But it is interesting that that is different. It is different in your in your market, right? I mean, yeah. it, you guys are home studios just weren't taken seriously for a very very long time. Exactly, and but with good reason, as I said before, George. You know what my yeah. friend said about you can't get the sound of drywall out of a mix, and there were some poorly set up sounds in studios, and clients couldn't be um, guaranteed that the end product they were getting is something they could use. Yeah. So that's that's why for a long time people were reluctant to allow uh, home studios to be used. Well, it, I think that's still the issue here too. I mean, there's you know it's some still people the issue, but there's more of us now that have figured out how to. Right. To get rid of the drywall sound. Right. By not using Ten drywall. Ten years ago, not so much. <laughs> yeah. It's like. But now we have. Now I was just recording my bathroom. Yeah. We it's figured like, it yeah. sound fine. Yeah. The bathtub. It's got a great resonance to it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, but yeah. Um, now, now I am thankfully being able to work from home more frequently. So my two major clients who I mentioned before who I do imaging and promos for, I do them both from here. Outstanding. And what do you record on software wise? Uh, I use, I started out using, um, Twisted Wave, a brilliant program, which I still love and still uh, sits on my computer. But now I tend to use Audition, Adobe yeah. Audition. Mm -hmm. Two of our favorites. Two like of the it. best. Yeah. I like it for, I like both programs for their simplicity. That's, mm -hmm. that's the thing about them that I love. It's, um, I'm not that technically minded as I've said earlier. And, um, you know, the simplicity of both Audition and Twisted Wave great programs for me i found um i found pro tools and this is just my own personal opinion um it was like trying to drive a thumbtack with a sledgehammer so overweighted <laughs> and overfeated that's one overfeated of my more... for what yeah i needed at home that it was just it was there were certain parts of it that were beyond me so i i went for the easier option of yeah we, we definitely Audition agree with you on wave. that we definitely agree with you on that for sure yeah i think of audition as like a twisted wave on steroids Mm. It still has the simple interface of editing, but it has way more features and stuff. And so it's a good well, stepping stone. George, isn't that how Twisted Wave came about in the first place? That um, there was the fr frustration of those in-home studios having Pro Tools or whatever was available to them at the time, which essentially you needed a studio engineering degree to use. And it was a case of we need to simplify this for people who are working from home. Is that the story, or have I got that? Well, you know, what? sort of. We interviewed Thomas years ago. Yeah, he was um, he was simply trying to create a good recording program. A simple, I think it was a dictation system. Is wasn't what he, was. he doing it as a as a just a? And I mean, if I remember, like an engineering exercise. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't like a commercial. It wasn't for commercial gain that he made it yeah. initially. And then, mm. yeah, and then Bo Weaver discovered it and, yeah, told Bo, the, and told the rest of us about it. Bo and, stumbled on it and thought he liked it. And then he had the ear of the developer, Thomas. And, you know, he'd say, well, it'd be cool if it did this. It'd be really nice if <laughs> right. we could yeah. do that. And then right. the software just started to evolve from there. And even to this day, if you get the ear of Thomas in the right time, you know, and you have a little, an idea, if it's not very hard to implement, he'll add it. You know, and that's wow. what's so amazing about yeah. the software all these years later. Yep. Well, on behalf of those who don't understand how to run Pro Tools, thank you, Thomas, and thank you, Bo. Yeah. Yeah. No, no need to use Pro Tools. You know? Not for what you were doing. Yeah, no, unless you're, like, recording big multi-track albums for some band or anything. Yeah. Uh, once again, well, if, if you've got a question for Lofty, uh, throw it in the chat room. But I wanted to get into uh, another thing with you. You've got a book that just came out. Uh, mm hmm and uh, it's called My Life in Short. In fact, here it is. I have one I prepared earlier for you. That's, <laughs> it still that's what it looks like. Um, <laughs> still uh, get, get the right camera angle right. Hey, uh, you've done the wrong way. A, that's a Damn, big book. There we go. Um, so, yeah, Lofty, My Life in Short. And um, What font? Because that uh, doesn't look very short to me. <laughs> yeah. It looks I, like a couple I, of no, days. No, actually, reading. there's a few pages. There's a few pages. Um, what is it? It's about 330-odd pages. Not so, bad, not um, bad. But, yeah, over the course of 55 years, I suppose, it, there's there's a bit to tell. Yeah. But yeah. Um, that that came about because I had been interviewed for a number of uh, pieces out here in Australia, which appeared both in uh, press and also on TV. And in the course of um, posting those on social media, somebody just said, Lofty, you should think about writing a book. And it had been suggested to me previously, but I'd freaked out at thought gun, my God, no one's going to want to read my story. And for some reason, this time it just resonated with me. And um, 
got in touch with uh, one of the ladies, a friend of mine, journalist and neighbour, who'd done one of the pieces that had appeared in the press out here, and said, Nicole, I'm thinking about writing a book. And um, she said, I'll, I'll be your ghostwriter. And a uh, week later, or two weeks after that, we met with Harper Collins here in Australia. And a week after that, we were offered the contract to uh, publish it. So oh, that's from, amazing. I think I might write a book to uh, having a contract was about the space of three to four weeks. Wow. That's incredible. That, that, that is impressive. You didn't have to self-publish. That's amazing. Yeah. No, um, I, it, I, I'm a big believer in the whole universal law thing and the world operates in mysterious ways. It was just the way things lined up. Met Nicole a week later. She introduced me to a friend who was a, a scout for books. She got the intro to us with Harper Collins. Went and met them, and then they said, "Yeah, we'd love to publish it." Outstanding. So, tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, you know, I mean, we know you, but m- most people may not be familiar with you or your work because you're in Australia. Uh, but exactly. Those of us in the voice business know you, but tell us a little bit how you got into the business and 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 that sort of thing. Well, um, at the ripe old age of fifteen, I woke up one Saturday morning and said to my mum, "Cup of tea and toast, thanks, mum." <laughs> uh, she she had heard this request several times in in the course of raising four children, myself being the youngest. And as a side note, I am the only one who was born in my family with achondroplasia, which is the form of dwarfism that I have. Most people think, well, you know, there's got to be a history of it. Yes, there does, but it's also got to start somewhere, and it happened to start with me. So wow. um, my op- my opportunities career wise were were shall we say fairly limited. Physical labour is not a not something that I could easily take on. And on that day that I asked mum for a cup of tea and toast, my, my voice had dropped. It literally had just dropped overnight. overnight. And, <laughs> wow. Um, it was, it was kind of freaky because I don't remember it doing that whole choir boy phase that, you know, uh, anyone who's got a teenager in the home and adolescent boy, hi mum, can I have some, play? can I have some dinner things, <laughs> you know, going all over the shop. And I don't remember that. And the reason I remember this day so clearly is my mum was, um, was cleaning and she, had a you know best Alice from the Brady Bunch outfit on and she had the feather duster in hand she had it back to me and when I said can I have a cup of tea and toast thanks mom she just stopped <laughs> she must have thought somebody <laughs> she held she held the feather duster like you know the Statue of Liberty holds the holds yeah. the lamp and and she just turned around to look at me and said what did you say <laughs> I thought obviously I forgot my manners my mom was huge on manners I said, oh, cup of tea and toast, thanks, Mum. What happened to your voice? <laughs> Dunno. So yeah, from that day forth, and it was Mum who suggested to me that I should uh, think about getting into radio as a possible career. She'd worked in radio herself in sales ah, and worked okay. in media for a while. There you go. There's yeah. a connection. Yep. And of course, I'd said to her, "Well, you know, Mum, only famous people get into radio. There's there's not a chance." And being a obnoxious teenager at the time, it was like. Yeah, whatever, Mum. She suggested to my speech and drama teacher at the time that uh, radio might be a good career for me. And when the speech and drama teacher suggested it, it was like, hey, that sounds like a great idea. Um, and one of the local radio stations in the town I lived in would give the schools time to come and report on what they'd done. And uh, the speech and drama teacher was in charge of handing those out. I went and did those. And after the last one, I got a call from the radio station to say, come on in, we'd like to have a chat to you. And they offered to train me, and from there I was able to start on my radio career, which I worked in, oh, let me see, about five radio stations all up over the course of 10 years. And then at the end of it, I got kind of a little bored with playing the same songs over and over again. And I thought, It happens. Well, <laughs> yeah, I thought, you know, I've, I've had to learn how to read commercials, so why don't I have a crack at this freelancing thing? And I came to Sydney 27 years ago. And the rest? I've been doing it pretty much ever since. So it's... um. I I equate taking that step out of radio, which is, although a job that I was over at the time, it it provided a steady income to jumping into the freelance world, sort of like, and don't try this at home, people, uh, jumping into a swimming pool fully clothed just to see if you can swim. Don't try it. It's not a good idea. Thankfully, I swam. But, um, and didn't sink. Yeah. As as we like to tell people, you know, if you want to start from this and, you know, stock up on ramen noodles. uh, (laughs) Stock, stock up on what? Ramen noodles. Ramen noodles. <laughs> dry noodles. Yeah, stock up on dry noodles. Mac and cheese. Or, or, yeah, that's yeah, mac thing. and cheese. Yeah. Uh, 
lots of lots of canned goods are, are great when you're starting out. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. It's about all you can afford. Yeah. But you've you've overcome some odds. Obviously, you know, your 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 physical size and appearance and and you know, which you know, to some people is like, oh, you're a dwarf. Uh mm. but it's obviously you you've you've had to overcome a lot. I'm I'm sure you took a lot of bullying when you were a kid and and so how how did you deal with all that? Um unfortunately, Dan, what it did was uh just sort of and I equate it to like trying to hold a, you know, a basketball underwater. Eventually the, the basketball is going to get the better of you and pop up out of the water. Huh. Um, and it's exhausting huh. trying to do that all the time. I just had to keep pushing these emotions of having been bullied, not just in school, but there was one of the radio stations I worked at, which I actually got bullied in as well. Um, and after the last round of bullying from management, I just decided, you know, it's, it's time to get out of here. And, um, that opened other doors for me, which was great. But all of that kind of thing of having been born different and born into a different, born into a big person's world, for want of a better term, it, um, it set up a lot of negative emotions, which I had to deal with. And uh, around about six years ago, they all came to the fore by bubbling up to the surface. And um, I had a breakdown. I went into a, um, a bout of clinical depression and general anxiety disorder. And I basically stopped functioning, but thankfully with the right help um, and uh, continue to this day, it's an, it's an ongoing process. Um, I've been able to get my mental health back in order. Oh, thank goodness. Good, good to know. Yeah. Well, once again, if you, anybody else has a question for, for Lofty Fulton, uh, throw it in the chat room. We'll get to it and uh, ask him all of your questions because I know you're just dying to talk to him. Uh, right after these incredibly important messages. So don't go away. This is Anthony Mendez. And you're watching Voice Over Body Shop. Question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VOHeroes.com want to know. As we head into the new year, they're planning new courses and new training and they want to find out what you need most. And it's easy to let him know. Just drop him an email at david at voheroes.com and let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it about auditioning? Is it about booking more work, finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions? Whatever that one thing is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head or that you've always wanted to know about success in VO, email David and ask. The email address again is david at voheroes.com. That's david at voheroes.com. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing, and there's jeans for working. Dickies. Because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. 
It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. It's just you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. V-O-B-S dot TV. We're back. All right. And we're back. <laughs> and we're back. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Say it with more verve. You know. <laughs> We're back with Ian Lofty Fulton joining us from Sydney, Australia. And uh, George, you had a question for him. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm just curious how, you know, actors like Peter Dinklage, having had that incredibly prominent and successful role in such a successful series on um, Game of Thrones, how that may have affected actors like yourself and anybody that has the same kind of stature you know and i I can't remember the technical term we tell me again the right proper term um dwarfism dwarf okay dwarfism there was another medical word you mentioned earlier but oh yeah sorry there are there are many different types of dwarfism most of which i don't know i just know the um the one that i have which is the most common one and it's also the one that peter has yeah achondroplasia is the medical term for it and what that refers to is the shorter long bones being the arms and the legs yeah. The torso is of a uh, normal height and the head is enlarged. So that gives us that disproportionate gotcha. look with the short arms and legs, the long body and the, and the, for want of a better term, fatter head. <laughs> well, I mean, you, like you, you were saying earlier that, I mean, when, during the break, how, you know, for many, many years that your roles were limited to circus freaks, basically, Absolutely. essentially. And now because Absolutely. of his role, I mean, are you seeing that as a, as a positive thing now for you guys? I see it as a very positive thing because his role was taken seriously. Yeah. And I have not, um, with the exception of a couple of pieces, which were really well done, um, I, for that reason, have steered clear of on-camera work because generally what people have offered um, has been... Uh, we want him in there as the point of derision to laugh at him, treat him like a circus freak, all of this kind of thing. Uh, in fact, one story I'll share with you, my agent knew that I wouldn't do on camera stuff. And this is going back a number of years now. And she was a fantastic gatekeeper when it came to this kind of thing. Somebody rang up and said, um, oh, look, we, we want to use Lofty in this commercial that we're doing. And it's going to be really, really tastefully done. And she just said, look, he won't do it. But you don't even know what it's for yet. I'm telling you, he won't do it because he's seen these things come through often enough to know what they're like. And, you know, he's he's just not prepared to put himself out there as a circus freak, which is my choice. And um, they said, oh, no, look, it, it's going to be really tastefully done. And she said, okay, well, send me through the role. And uh, if I have a look over it and I think it's worth handing through to him to consider it, I'll let him know. So a week or so went by and I hadn't heard anything. And so I rang her and I said, um, what happened with that commercial that they were saying was going to be really tastefully done? And it was for a foot odor commercial. And the scene, as I was led to believe, was people commuting on a bus all standing up, holding the upper handrails. And of course, the camera would pan along. There's the taller people. Then camera comes down to me. And then it goes back up again to the rest of the people standing on the bus. And it was like, basically, the premise being, because I'm shorter, I was going to smell foot odor first. So use this powder. <laughs> Really tastefully done. Yeah, wow. yeah, really. Yes, yeah, yeah. so I applaud her for not sending it through. And I mean, they're, they're generally roles that, you know, have been offered and I've always steered clear of them because um, I, I'm i just not interested. I, I had enough bullying and freakish behavior at school and, you know, you still get the morons on the street calling out, hey, short ass, and stuff like that. Hey, fathead, hey, look at him. Um, you know, I don't need to put myself out there for that, for further derision. There's just no point. Well, you showed them. Yeah. Because now you've, you're doing something that you're obviously extremely skilled at and become quite successful at. So 
We'll <laughs> thank you. Yeah, really yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's all those yeah, I didn't know if I was allowed to say ass on the um on on the thing or not, but um, can I share with you a couple of stories sure. that, in relation to what you were just talking about, yeah. George? That in the in the days prior to the internet, where of course you could Google, you can Google anyone now. You Google me, you'll see stacks of images. But before Captain Google came along, the way we were cast was uh, back in the old days off cassette. Our demos were on cassette and the client would listen, choose who they want. They'd ring the agent and book the talent. Uh, it then went to CDs and then eventually onto online casting. So back in the days of cassette and CD, most people didn't know what I looked like. And this is back when um, I mentioned before about cable TV was starting, uh, was very much in its infancy here in Australia. And uh, the sports channel now known as Fox Sports was uh, casting for voices. And they, they booked out a studio for the day and they had voices coming in on sort of like 15 minute, 30 minute intervals, one after another, just rolling through. And I'd not been to this studio before, and uh, it was an old TV station which had been converted back into a production suite. And so I've walked in and it was about seven o'clock at night and this lady looks up at, from the reception desk and she goes, um, can I help you? Yeah, hi, my name's Lofty. I'm here to do an audition for Hugh. And she went, okay, up the stairs, along the corridor, down the stairs, you'll get to another receptionist and she'll let you know you're here. So I went in, got to the other receptionist who looks up from her desk, quizzically goes, um, can I help you? Yeah, hi, my name's Lofty. I'm here to do an audition for Hugh. And she went, oh, okay, please take a seat, uh, pointing to a couch that was away to her right. And the door to the uh, production suite was in front of her. And she said, I'll let them know you're here. Anyway, a few minutes later, a, a cast of a few guys, I would say there were about five or six of them, all piled out of the production suite. And they're looking at their watches. God, this guy's late. I'm just watching this out of the corner of my eye, trying not to freak out. <laughs> and, the receptionist, <laughs> and the receptionist goes to uh, Hugh, as subtly as she possibly could. I'll just, that's lofty. What? That's lofty. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. And so Hugh comes over, extends his hand to shake it and, uh, lofty, cute, yep, yeah, good. Anyway, the upshot of it is they rang my agent the following day and they said, why didn't you tell us about lofty? What do you mean? Tell you what, was he late? Was he hard to work with? Was he rude? Was he difficult? What's the story? Know what he looks like. Uh, well, because you're hiring him for his voice and not what he looks like. And eventually I got the gig anyway and went on, had an association with Fox Sports for about 10, 10 years or so. Oh, that's I'm glad great. to hear a happy ending to that really? story. Yeah. yeah well, uh, there have been many a client surprised. I'm sure. Uh, well, we've got a lot of uh, questions from our amazing audience that is Thank scattered you, about the... Uh, the four corners of the globe. Yeah, we have a one-man interview from Paul Stefano oh, yeah. and then a question from Fred North. <laughs> well, we'll start with, um, actually, I'm going to read off your screen because it's a lot easier to see. Oh, with oh the there you go. Over here, huh? Okay. Uh, so one from Paul uh, asking, how much do you need to adjust your schedule to work with international clients? So yeah. are you having to work wacky hours or is a lot of that stuff send and record and send stuff? Um, I, I haven't done a lot internationally. Um, I have worked with Abu Dhabi, Singapore. I have worked with the States and yeah, we, we do adjust our hours. You basically, you make it uh, easy for the client. So if the client has a studio that, or wants to hear you at nine o'clock in, in California, and it happens to be, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning here, you, um, you, you get up and, and work around it. I, I haven't had to do it all that frequently, but one job that I did do, which was um, for he, uh, Hyundai, as you guys say over there, we say Hyundai, uh, and uh, Major League um, Football. They did this thing of um, draft day 2020. I ended up being the voice of that. And uh, I was in the booth on, um, on ISDN back when we had it uh, at two o'clock in the morning. But you, you, you do what you've got to do to get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now I'll bet it gets messed up with schedule since you're on the other side of the international dateline. It's like, well, that's my Tuesday morning, uh, but it's your Monday night. Or <laughs> absolutely, Dan. Has that happened much at all? Or uh... yeah. I am. Um, I've um, I've relied on this website, World Time Converter, and thankfully, a lot of the iPhones you can put in locations. And if you're any good at math, which I can't profess to be, you 
you know, you count out the hours and work it out that way. But um, yeah, the, I had one situation where I was, uh, I was booked for a certain time and um, the client didn't realize that time was Pacific and Pacific time rather, rather than the East coast time. And um, that sort of got a little out of whack, but thankfully I was there at the right time. So we did a bit of jigging around and it was all good. Yeah. That's always fun. It's like three hours ahead, three hours behind. It's messed me up plenty of times. Yeah, luckily, luckily the podcast I'm on with a, a guy from Australia, a guy, from, I mean, two guys from Australia, Sydney and Melbourne, they, they coordinate it. Yeah. And they're so used to dealing with, you know, Pacific time. And then Robert Marshall is in, you know, uh, central time. Right. They've gotten pretty good at coordinating it. But and then we have a guest on from somewhere else. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. Um, Fred North. Um, oh, we had it on the lower third, but would you say out loud, what is your website? Because people may want to hear your demos. Uh, LoftyFulton.com. LoftyFulton.com. LoftyFulton. Because we released the show as a podcast, too, so people may only right. hear it, not see. Yeah. Um, and can I, get, yeah, can I give a plug for the books website as well? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Please. Yeah. Um, as I hold it up to the camera one more time, uh, Lofty, my just like the title is there, Lofty, my life in short.com. Unfortunately, the paperback is only available in Australia, but if you'd like to read it or hear it, I did the audio book for it. Um, it's uh, available on Audible and um, other other sites so if you go to lofty lofty my life in short.com that'll tell you all about it thank you excellent thank you. uh thank you. oh have you used coaches and if so are they always australian due to the accent differences from the u.s coaches and does that matter um i, I have used my coaches. I've, I've worked with uh a dialect coach out here a lady by the name of Catherine beck who uh formerly well is from chicago originally married to an aussie living out here in Sydney. And I've also done quite a deal of work with um, Maurice Tobias, who is just incredible. She um, she is quite rightly referred to as the voice whisperer. And if you have the opportunity to work with her to hone your craft, then I thoroughly suggest you do so because it doesn't really matter in that case, particularly with Maurice. Um, she works with people all over the world. Uh, mm -hmm. So the accent isn't an issue. Sure. Absolutely. Want to get the next one? Yeah, but i i would I would say that um, coaching is is particularly important because it, it's I suppose it's like being an athlete in the sense of you know you run the hundred yards sprint you can't just sit on your couch and pull it out on a Saturday morning as you head to the track you've you've got to train for it you've got to you know you've got to keep it in your bag so to speak to keep keep up with what's changing and, and how, oh, things, yeah. Yeah. how things are moving. Cause that is one thing surefire about voiceover is it's constantly changing. Yeah. Paul has another question here. He says, do you work in New Zealand at all? Uh, any crossover in the two markets? No, I know there's hefty competition between the Aussies and the Kiwis. Uh, is, is, is it a slightly different accent? Is there, is there a crossover in those markets? Not a lot of crossover. Um, because the New Zealand accent is different. It's it's different in the way as the difference between the Canadian and the US accent. Mm. Um, that uh, as an American, you would hear all the different nuances in Canada that, uh, that make somebody's accent uh, stand out to you. Whereas to somebody from another country, they might go, they sound very similar or they sound the same. Are you Canadian right. or are you from the US? And so from that perspective, uh, to those living in both places, they can easily tell the difference between the accents. Of course. All righty. Uh, let's see. He has, also asks, in the U.S., it seems we can't go to the grocery store without seeing another voice actor. How much of your competition or colleagues do you know or have met in person? <laughs> A lot. Um, we have the... We have the the beauty of going out to work, as as we discussed earlier, Dan. That uh, a lot of our work is done in um, commercial studios in town, and we're generally uh, part of a, an agency roster. So we all tend to see each other or bump into one another every now and then. We're not as we're not as isolated as perhaps just being stuck in your home studio all the time. So yeah, a number of my friends are, are voice actors and if we get together as an agency and the roster is having a party, so to speak, then of course you, you get to see the people that you know. 
Yeah. I hope that kind of answers the question. I don't know if it does. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, should, you should probably have an Australian meetup group, which is something, you know, we, we encourage it at World Voices is that, you know, people should, you know, work within their own communities and uh, and support each other and get together and uh, because that's really important in the in the voiceover world. So uh, I it's, don't know if there is one in Australia. Huge. It's huge. Um, we have a we have a get together at the end of each financial year. I don't know. I think you guys might call it a, a fiscal fiscal year. year yeah, where, where the um, uh, the studio engineers and the voice actors and the agencies just go raise a glass to the end of another year and get a chance to catch up. But um, there's not so many workshops that I see. Obviously, you know, keeping in touch with the states market, I see a lot of things online about workshops and get-togethers. We don't tend to have those so much here. Hmm. I think it. I think part of it, and something I've also been guilty of, is that um, people have their piece of pie, and they they tend to want to protect that piece of pie, and they feel that you know, if they go and share their secrets with other people, then they might come along and take their pie. I don't know. It's, well, I can't speak for everybody, but I know previously that was the kind of feeling I had. Sure. Understandable. Yeah. All right. So all right, to finish up with, now mm -hmm. you, you've, you've, you've had a very challenging, you know, a, a challenging early part of your life and you've been able to pull it together. Any words of encouragement for somebody who's trying to get into the voiceover business and, and how to overcome the, the obstacles that you do to, to try and be successful? I would say um, something we touched on a moment ago, uh, work with good coaches. And the best way that um, you find out about good coaches is talking to fellow voice actors. Um, uh, I heard about Maurice a lot online and uh, a lot of the trailer guys and promo guys were talking about it. That's how I, I came to know of her. And I think you've got you've to get with somebody that you like and can work with easily and also trust. Uh, it's not a one size fits all. So find the right coach for you and, um, you know, talk to your friends and colleagues in the industry and find out what their recommendations would be for moving forward, perhaps who you do your demo with. And as there are different facets of the industry, as we know, um, it would depend on which coach you go and work with. Like if your passion is, say, animation, for instance, you'd work with an animation coach. Promos and trailers, you'd work with somebody different. Commercials, uh, e-books, for argument's sake, um, or audio books, I should say. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a matter of doing a bit of research, but thankfully... And Dan, you just said that people share a lot of that information uh, within the community. There's a lot of that to be had out there. And um, yeah, just pick the right person for you to work with. All righty. Ian Lofty Fulton, thanks for joining us here on VoiceOver Body Shop. We've been, it's been great to see you after all these years too. And uh, you planning on coming? I had a lot more hair last time you saw a, you, we saw each other, Dan. <laughs> I had a lot more hair. You may remember I was sporting a fantastic mullet. But uh, <laughs> George and Dan, thank you so very much for the opportunity to catch up with you guys today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank we you. hope to, hope to get you here in the back out on the West Coast soon. And I want to see Australia. Now I've seen Central oh. Europe. Now I want to go see Australia and New Zealand. Definitely on the list. It's worth it. I, it's worth it. Make I'm the sure. trip. All righty. Lofty Fulton, Thanks, everybody. Guys. All righty. Well, George and I will be right back to wrap things up right after these. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Um. 
All right, it's time to talk about our good friend Harlan Hogan over at voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Great place to get all sorts of stuff. And the other day was Black Friday. Today's Cyber Monday. And you only have a little bit of time to save a lot of money over at Voice Over Essentials. Not that his prices are always great, but he's got this great deal right now. You can today is the last day you can save up to $150 over at Voice Over Essentials. It's the one time of the year when they discount the Porta Booth Plus and the Porta Booth Pro. So far, they've said that Black Friday has been fabulous and the sales of the new Centrance mixer face have been great. But if you want a Porta Booth Plus or a Porta Booth Pro, now, before midnight, Pacific time, Harlan says, you can get $150 off the Pro, the Pro or Plus. The only time of the year they do it because they want you to have uh, one of those great little portable units in your arsenal as a voice actor. And they got all sorts of other great stuff. We talked about the Centrance mixer face and, of course, the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone that you see right here that I'm now tapping on. Never do that in the studio. And uh, also the Harlan Hogan uh, Signature Series headphones and a bunch of other stuff. Go over to voiceoveressentials.com right now. Well, after the show. And get yourself all the stuff they have. But right now, save $150 on a Porter Booth Pro or a Porter Booth Plus. Thanks for being our sponsor for almost nine years, Harlan. We love you. This is the time of the show where we get to talk about one of our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements. Those are the creators of Source Connect. That is a software that voice acting pros are being demanded to have in their home studios by the commercial studios of the world. How do I know this? Well, I've set up software for everybody on every platform and in every scenario you can imagine. And this is the one that people are being requested to get. It's a standalone application doesn't run on a Google Chrome browser. So you have a lot more stability involved. And this software has been tried and true, tested, improved the whole nine for well over 10 years now. So if you really want to be establishing a business in voiceover that works with the top studios in the world, top agents, that kind of thing, make sure you have Source Connect locked and loaded in your studio. Absolutely important. Go get a 15 day free trial at Source dash elements.com 15 day free trial you don't need an iLock little usb dongly thing to get set up with source connect standard right away so go give it a try and tell them we sent you we'll be right back right after this Ooh, i think i heard the voice of a body shop i did i did hear the voice of a body shop Beetle body shop and we are back to say goodbye at least for this segment mm -hmm. uh Next week on this very show, it'll be Tech Talk number 21. All right. We're racking them up. We are. I, lots of great stuff over those 21 episodes of Tech Talk. And it's like the Bible of home voiceover studios. Yeah. I mean, I mean we used to run the Tech Talk part was part of the episode, you know, as one show. And we found that just there sometimes people just want the tech, you know. And, so and we now give it to you. It's easier to find specific topics that you want to hear about. So stay yeah. tuned for that. And yeah. we'll be taping that live here right after this. Yeah. And we've got a lot of great guests coming up. Hopefully Jack Daniel in a couple of weeks. Yes. Not the drink, the voice actor. <laughs> uh, and hopefully next year, Elaine Clark and greatest hits like our good friend, Joseph Briano and Bob Bergen, who you just heard. Uh, Chris Freeze, Fries, Fries. He goes professionally now by Fries. Fresh, mm -hmm. And we want to do a couple of round uh, round tables on tech and demos and all sorts of stuff. We have, so. It never ends. There's no shortage of content. Yeah. And that's why we bring it to you. And how we bring it to you every week, I don't know. <laughs> um, we have donors, though, that help us along to pay for all of these fine equipment that we have and the great technical uh, prowess that we have attained in this show. <laughs> And who are our donors of the week? Yes. Actually, it's cut quite a few because it's been a couple yeah, weeks. We've accumulated we've a few weeks of shows here, but we've got Patty Gibbons, Michael Kearns, Brian Rausch, Antland Productions, that's our friend Uncle Roy, Michelle Blinker, Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Mosley, Tom Pinto, Stephanie Sutherland, George Widom Sr., that's my dad, uh, obviously, <laughs> Shauna Pennington Baird, Hope feel Don better. Griffith, 
Joseph Harrison, and Harlo Rodriguez. All right. The majority Har- of those names are subscribers. They repeat, donate every yeah. month. But Harlow's a new one. Thanks, Thanks. for watching, thank Harlow. Harlo. We appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, thank you. It's awesome. Uh, we'd love you to join our mailing list. Uh, that way you get to know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we get to know who you are. And although we're up to about 625 names, we'd like to get that up to 1,000. Sure, let's shoot for a thousand. I works for me. Sounds good to me. Uh, and show us your booths. Uh, this is a marvelous studio. This is Rob. What's his last name? I know it's in here somewhere. Rob uh, Regal. Re, re, um, oh, I have it's not it. At the tip of my finger. I have it. I have it written down here, so I have to find it. It's scrolling, uh, scrolling, 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 scrolling. Rob R- Riddle. Right. Is it Riddle? Riddle, Riddle, Rigby, Rig, uh, you know. <laughs> Now I'm just making up it's, dumb last names. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's got a gorgeous studio. <laughs> Doesn't he? This is this is fabulous. It's top shelf. It it really is. Not everybody in voiceover goes that far. Yeah. I would have mentioned. I would venture to guess he does a bit of production himself. And he has a lot of instruments in there, so yeah. he records music. In that there. looks like a fun studio. Absolutely. Senders uh, in. We want to have more pictures just like that one. Yeah. Uh, whatever your studio is, even if it's just moving blankets, we don't care. We want to see the space you're working in and send it in to us in a landscape format and a nice high resolution. You know, any cell phone made in the last five years will send a good enough picture, but make sure you send it in high resolution so we can show it on the show. That's right. Uh, also, we'd love to have you in our studio. I guess since we started doing this at five o'clock, we haven't had a lot of people in here. They don't yeah. know what they're missing. Yeah, if you're in town or if you're between jobs or whatever it is, come in. We got a comfy, comfy place to hang out with us. We have a, a radio museum. There's a lot to. It's a cool place to hang out for a little while. It is. And we love having the energy of live audience when we can get you in here. Absolutely. Uh, we also need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's Voiceover Essentials, Voiceover Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and J. Michael Collins Demos. And of course, the Dan and Marcy Leonard Foundation for the Betterment of Live and Recorded Webcasting. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, today I was doing the chat, chat room. room. And our amazing technical director who came in, she hasn't been here for a month, and she's like, I know how to do this. Picked it right up. Super Lino and flawless tonight. We yeah. appreciate that. And of course, Lee Penny simply for being Lee Penny. Uh, well, that's going to do it for us this week. We got tech talk coming up. So don't go away. If you got tech questions, stay tuned for that. Uh, but uh, we know this isn't an easy business. We know that it's important to learn from other people that have walked the walk and talked the talk literally talk the talk since they're voice actors and uh, <laughs> we're happy to bring them to you here on voiceover body shop i'm dan leonard and i'm george Whittem. and this is voiceover body shop or vo bs yes. have a great week everybody good night